Hello, Imperium. Uh, welcome to our little video Nax walkthrough. Uh, so, a couple of little caveats here. Um, this is the Wrath of the Lich King version, so the trash pulls and even the bosses are slightly different. I'm going to be explaining how they're different um, as we go along, so just bear with me. This isn't a exact replica, but it's close-ish enough. Um, however, I rest assured that I know what the classic Nax one is, so we're all good. Um, I'm going to walk us through sort of the macro level on the polls. Um, there's additional micro stuff that you'll find in the documents. Um, but the most important part uh, is that just sort of generally you understand uh, what we're trying to get through here. So we're going to do the trash and the bosses. Um, and uh, by the end of this, you should have a very good sense of uh, what it takes to do well in here. But for class specific stuff, feel free to reach out to me um, or your class leads. Uh, and we'll have specific uh, per fight, uh, you know, things, little little tricks. So uh, we're going to start with the spider wing. There are four wings. Uh, this is the spider wing. Um, it's a Nubricon, Feralina, and Maxna. After each wing, we teleport back to the middle. So here we go. Um, first pull is a skitterer pull. It is just a melee AoE damage pull. We're going to pull it down here with a frost trap. Um, the idea here is that we want the casters, particularly with blizzards of, or cone of colds or whatever, um, we want as much ranged damage on these beforehand as possible. And we want the, we want the casters moving in for AOE um, after they've done a little bit of damage because we don't want to lose people on these pulls. So um, we don't want you hell firing right away. We don't want an immediate blast wave. Um, we want the melee to do some damage. We want to do some blizzards and some rains of fire. So you're probably not going to pull threat with those. Um, and they're going to be slowed, so you can always just kind of kite them back. Uh, then you move in once they're 50% or whatever and start blasting. Um, so we do a couple of pulls of that. Then we get to this pull. Um, there are several of these pulls, or similar pulls. Um, it starts with the Venom Stalker. That is our first kill target, always. Um, later on, they're called Necro Stalkers. Um, they do a charge uh, that will hit everybody in, you know, five yards or six yards around you. So you just want everybody nice and spread out in this little corner. Um, and then what happens is, uh, so we pull these and then the tanks um, grab. Uh, so this is the 10 man version. Oh, fuck me. Hey, Dreidel, we got to start over. Just bear with me real quick. We don't have to actually start over. I'm just going to go set this to 25, man. Uh, just because it gives us a better sense of the size of the poles. The 10-man was... They, everything got scaled way down. So... Twenty-five man, yay. Okay, sorry for breaking the fourth wall there. Um, we're back. Again, it's same shit. So on these pulls, the Venom Stalkers, those are our kill target. Um, and then there are there are three Carrion Spinners, and there are three uh, uh, Dread Creepers. The Dread Creepers put a little debuff um, that is a Mortal Strike debuff, so uh, it is decursible. So Mages and Druids, that's on you. Um the carrion spinners, however, do a frontal conal attack that is about two or three thousand poison damage. It they cannot face the raid. So when we make these pulls, we'll pull the venom stalker um, in, and the tanks that are picking up carrion spinners um, drag them to the outside and make sure that they're not facing the raid, um, and make sure that they're not facing other tanks, and you don't want them facing any anybody. Um, and we kill the Venom Stalker, and then we kill the Carrion Spinners, and then we kill Dread Creepers. Um, the Carrion Spinners can also do that stupid thing where they grab you with a web and pull you in front of them. Um, just run back straight through their body, and you will be fine. You might take a uh, a Conal attack, which would suck, but it's not shouldn't be enough to kill you if you're full health. Now we're to a Nubricon. Um, so here's how this fight starts. Fight starts with the tank grabbing a Nubricon and running them back to that far corner on the right-hand side. Um, 
the idea is he's got a little knock up and some other stuff, but you want him tanked kind of far away from the raid because of a mechanic later on. Then everybody is spread out loosely over here while we kill these two crypt guards. We're going to tank them right here. They have a pain in the ass. Um, they have a pain in the ass uh, stacking uh, dot, and they have a pain in the ass cleave. So uh, we burn them down, and when they die, they spawn 10 little uh, scarabs that need to be killed. Anytime anyone dies on this fight, you are going to spawn five little scarabs. It sucks. Um, those need to be AoE'd down. Because uh, they'll co go and womp a healer. because And they do hit reasonably hard, and they have a decent health. Um, so on pull, we kill the two Crypt Guards. Everybody does. And then we get to Anubricon. When we're on Anubricon alone, we want everybody spread out kind of horizontally. We don't want there to be a like five people in a line vertically you know going this way because he doesn't impale that knocks anybody up and it is a cone um so it knocks people up and it is enough to kill you if if you're not all the way full health so um you can use snog and fogger elixir you can get shielded you can get someone a mage can cast slow fall on you because you do get knocked up high so they can look up click on you and hotkey it if they're fast so um but the idea here is is that be ready to take a healing pot or whatever you need to to be sure that you're topped off. Um, it's physical damage, so no no kind of prop potion is going to save you. Um, so when we pull a Nubricon, um, he has, on top of the uh, Impale ability, he also has something called Locust Swarm. It's a small AoE around him um, that will silence everyone and prevents all attacks. So he can't be hit, really, by melee. Um, the idea is it's an untankable amount of damage, and you need to run out of it as the main tank. So we kite him along the outside of that little poop river um, all the way back to this starting door in the doorway again. Um, and by the time you get back over here, the debuff has ended. In order for the tank to be fast enough to do that, um, they either need to use a swiftness potion or they need to have a hunter standing over here with aspect on. And as soon as it casts, he starts um, the hunter and the uh, tank start running. Um, so we, we get him back into his spot, into his new tanking spot. Locust Swarm has ended. Um, in the meantime, um, all the melee have run out early. All of the ranged and casters are stacking up again because he can't impale you during Locust Swarm. And you kill the new Crypt Guard that he summons, and then you kill his adds, and then he should be back in his, his spot ready to go, and we DPS the shit out of him again, and he dies. Um, and that's the whole fight. We do that once or twice, and we got a dead boss. Everyone needs to have a sense of personal accountability of their own life. Um, they need to not pull threat, because Anubricon is one of the two untauntable bosses. Um, and you know, it's a it's not a it's not a super challenging fight. Um, so then we move on to more trash, and uh, lots of trash is going to be the theme of next Ramus. Um, so we move in, we pull this. There's another skitter skitterer pack that is coming right now. We pull that one next. Um, I have stupid range. Um, we pull that next back into the room. Um, we pull this group on the right back into the room. These are carrying spinners again. So they're the guys that you got to face away from the raid um, and that do the little uh, suck you in thing, um, except that it is a Crypt Reaver this time. The Crypt Reaver does need to die first because it does a lot of single target threat. Um, so we kill it, or damage rather. So we kill it right here and then we face the Crypt or the carrying spinners away. You know, a couple here, a couple here, one here. And then we're done. Um, but we keep them faced away. And it is a great idea to remain on a lot of these polls, by the way. It is a great idea to find a way to be out of line of sight on the poll. Um, because you can get a couple of bad early uh, cone attacks. And all of a sudden, you've taken 6k damage. And it's really not pretty. So the big thing on the spider wing, guys, is there's a ton of nature damage. The best thing you can do to stay alive to avoid those like those one-time holy shit I got screwed by circumstances kind of thing 
is have a nature prop potion running. Okay, we're doing another skitter pull here, and then there's a skitter path that we pull back, and we pull this one back. Um, so that's the best thing you can do. Um, these become these venom stalkers are actually necro stalkers, which are upgraded versions of the venom stalkers from earlier. Um, they hit like a truck. They do a charge. Um, so you need to stay spread out. Every time you see a Necro Stalker or a Venom Stalker, everyone needs to stay spread out um, to prevent the charge getting the most damage. They can also do a dot. That is a 5k per tick dot. Two, two, two of those, and you're done. So Poison Cleansing is absolutely paramount during all of these pulls. Um, it's absolutely paramount. Um, and it needs to be done like literally within a tick. Um, because most people aren't going to survive a 5k nature damage tick, much less two of them. So um, it needs to be dispelled immediately. Um, so we'll make this pull. Um, there's another skitterer pull. Um, and then we are into the Naxxramas cultists and acolytes. So um, these guys, there's actually six of these pulls, or maybe even seven of these pulls um, in Classic. The Naxxramas Acolytes do a Shadow Bolt Volley and an Arcane Explosion. They're a huge pain in the ass. Um, so the idea is that you want um, to blow them up as fast as possible. So like on this pole, there's one, you know, two Acolytes and the rest are Cultists. Cultists just have an AoE uh, knockback that's Shadow Damage and is annoying as fuck. Um, but they're not particularly lethal. Um, they still need to be tanked. They still need to be treated treated seriously. But what we want in this pull is to get the Acolytes dead through single target and cleave as fast as humanly possible. So on pull, for example, we'll have all the Hunters, Mages, Pyro, Blast. Uh, uh, we'll do a pull timer on all of these. Warlocks, Shadow Bolt, the first one. And we'll have a DPS Warrior on the Skull and X, um, or just Skull. Um, and the tanks will pick up everything else because we need we need one or two of those down as quickly as they can because you can have poles where see this pole is three there are poles that will have four one two three four um, and those poles are nasty um, so it's really not something you want to fuck around with um, and so you need to treat them seriously um, shadow protection potions are probably the the saving grace on those poles. Um, as it does more than the arcane explosion does. Um, however, you know I understand that that's expensive thing. So just how importantly do you value your life? That's the important part. So now we're at Fairlina. Um, on pull, these followers are going to get killed first because they do nothing, um, and so we just kill them. Um, all of the Naxxramas worshippers, all four of them, are going to get pulled over here and tanked by a couple of tanks. Um, we tank her right where she stands. Um, her two main abilities, well, three main abilities, her two that everyone needs to worry about are Rain of Fire and Poison Bolt Volley. Rain of Fire can kill you in a couple of ticks. So, you know, despite the fact that healers are going to try to keep you up through the Poison Bolt Volley and they're going to be cleansing you, you need to be ready as someone that is not a healer with a, with a greater fire protection potion if needs be because it will be the difference between life and death on this fight for you um if you are half a second too slow moving out moving out of the rain of fire and you take two ticks you can probably die so um it's that unforgiving um or at least it was so uh the other big thing um that you need to know about is fairlina has a frenzy that frenzy she'll attack 150 percent faster um, it's an additional 150% and hit way harder. Um, she can almost global a tank. So that tank, you know, tanks are going to have to wear some mint gear on this. Um, she is tauntable, but it's a dangerous game um, because not only will she be hitting hard, but also uh, the healers will be transitioning heals. So it doesn't really work. Um, so the idea here is that when you mind control one of these worshippers, because they're mind, con mind controllable, they will kill the... They, they have an ability where they will kill themselves, but they will remove the frenzy off of Fairlina. So what you want to have happen is there's two different ways to go about this. If she is already frenzied and you worshiper uses that ability, it will silence her from using frenzy for a full minute. So there are four worshipers, so she can cast it four times, and that's the amount of time we have to kill her. Um, we'll have four minutes effectively, four and a half minutes. Um, 
but that means that there it needs to be that needs to be done within like a global cooldown of her casting it otherwise the tank can die um so the other kind of safer way to do it is to have these um worshipers you can right before she casts a frenzy um you can blow one up on her and it will only prevent her from casting frenzy for 30 seconds but she never goes into frenzy either so there's no worry about the tanks um she does hit very hard normally um, which is why she can global attack um, when she has frenzy. So the idea is, if our DPS is really good, we'll do a preemptive frenzy uh, break. If our DPS needs more time, we will likely wait until she casts frenzy, and the tanks will find a way to rotate through that. Um, either way, uh, it should be a dead boss, and it should be. We should not struggle too much with this fight. Um, oh look, I got an achievement. Um, but that's the whole fight. It's uh, have a little uh, have a little fire contingency for yourself, and tanks get ready to get walloped. And a lot of this is on the people doing MCs. Moving on. Um, so these tomb horrors um, are up, kind of upgraded uh, crypt stalkers from earlier. Except they also have a nature damage. I believe it might be shadow damage, but I believe it's a nature damage AOE around their body. Um, so what we want to have happen is a tank picks it up. Um, these are just red creepers. They're the ones that do the healing debuff. They're not a big deal. A couple tanks pick these up. We do need decurses immediately. Everybody, including melee, despite the AOE, blows up the tomb horror, blows up the dread creepers. Not a big deal. Um, now there's a second pull. Of the two more dread creepers and a skitterer and we'll just blast through that real quick um and then we get into really kind of a, a shit sequence of trash pulls so we have another one of these pulls um not too terribly big a deal so this is where the trash pulls get different and so it's going to be hard to visualize okay so this poll I don't think is there. Um, instead, there are several things in this room. There's a pat of two plague ghouls. Um, the plague ghouls do a cleave, and they also have a... I think they have an AoE, uh, an AoE aura. They need to be separated from each other because they hit super hard in melee. They need to be single-targeted down and separated. Um then we move to uh, there's a spirit of Naxxramas. It's a big black shade. Um, it's a big black shade. They're stunnable, is the big thing. So we're gonna have a stun rotation on those. You can't interrupt their shadow bolt volley, which is their big thing. Um, they also uh, ha open a portal that will summon ads. We shouldn't ever really see the ads. So um, that's kind of this first bit. Um, so there are two more poles of Necrostalker double packs that we've dealt with before. There are also two uh, there are also two more patrols of plagued gargoyles. Um, they do an AOE poison. Um, we need to single target them because they do a thing where they at thirty percent they will attempt to heal to full um, if you don't kill them in time. So we get them to thirty percent, then we got to nuke them. Um, that's why you single target them. And then there are also um, Necropolis Acolytes at each of these doorways. Um, it's two of them. The Necropolis Acolytes um, are kind of the same as those next, next Ramus Acolytes. They're upgraded versions. They just do a lot more damage. Um, um, they are... Parts of what they do are interruptible. Um, I believe the Shadow Bolt Volley is interruptible. Um, so you single target them down and, uh, don't tank them next to each other. And, uh, that's kind of it on those. Um, so there's that pull, that pull. Um, and so ideally what we're doing here. So in classic, these rooms are full of these, and we'll run into this in the military quarter again. It's full of these dogs. Um, I don't remember what the dogs do, but I also remember wiping to them all the time. 
So what we're actually going to do is skip those, um, provided Warcraft logs lets us. We're going to skip these. And we're going to run over here, and then we're all going to stand over here, and we're all going to heal to full and be ready because there, ne there are two Necropolis Acolytes in this doorway. So what we do is we just run straight into here, and we pull them and kill them. And it's not a huge deal. Um, just needs to be done carefully. These pulls don't exist. There is a Skitterer pack, but um, we shouldn't ever pull it. And this pull does not exist in Classic Nex. Um, oh, fuck off. So now we're at the last boss of this wing. Um, my ex does a pretty fun boss. She's challenging um, for one specific reason, which is an ability called Web Spray. So Web Spray stuns everyone in the raid without exception um, for eight seconds. That means that the tank is taking her with no heals for eight seconds. That's the big mechanic. So um, I would consult the written guide on this because there's a lot of little tips and tricks on in the written guide um, that everyone should follow. But that's the big mechanic we need to worry, out, worry about. It happens like every minute or something. So we should only see a couple of them. Um, but the other thing is she has an enrage at 20 or 30%. Um, so if she's enraged during the web spray, the tank is definitely dead. So the idea is kind of like Nefarian, where we don't want to push him over when it's about to be really bad. Um, we wait, we get him down to the enraged point. We then take a web spray, we get through it, and then we burn 30%. That's the time to blow cooldowns. Um, here's the other stuff that's going on. There's a... Uh, poison that is needs to be that will get put on uh, the tank that is a 90% healing debuff it is fucking awful um, it needs to be dispelled immediately there needs to be someone assigned to stop cast dispel it right away um, it's a big deal um, the other thing she does is she web wraps three people and then throws them over here um they get launched up onto the wall and they're not targetable by melee. Ranged, your responsibility, because we're going to be tanking your kind of center of the roomish, about right here. Um, ranged or standing back over here. Your responsibility is to break those people out instantly. Um, they, do, they do not have a lot of health, but they take nature damage. <clears throat> Ooh, I mean, damage, nature damage, uh, as long as they're in there. Um, so it needs to be, they need to be broken out uh, right away. Um, and also just on top of that, the healers and the ranged need to be stacked on top of each other because little spiders will spawn in packs of five during the fight and they need to be AOE'd. So it's a lot easier if all the healers who will have the aggro are just standing there. Um, they don't have a ton of health, but they do need to be dealt with. Otherwise they will kill a healer. Um, so the idea is we DPS, 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 we're tanking, we're fine. When a web spray hits, the tank is topped off, they've blown a cooldown, um, and are able to survive. Um, they will need shields, full hots, everything that they can get. Um, and then once we come out of the uh, out of the web spray, there need to be assignments for immediately making sure that there's no necrotic poison on, like you're spamming that button on web spray for the last second. There needs to be a couple of people assigned for a nature swiftness greater heal or, or healing wave or whatever. Um, you know, there needs to be someone assigned for shield immediately because the tanks, you know, they're definitely, you know, we'll have trouble surviving eight seconds. We're definitely, definitely not going to survive 10 or 12 seconds before a bunch of heals land. So, um, this is a, a really, really punishing fight if your assignments aren't clear and you don't follow your responsibilities. If you do those things, this really isn't such a bad fight, um, which is why we're starting in the spider wing. Um, but that is the whole fight. Um, we get her down to a certain point, we wait for a web spray, um, and then we finish her. And that is our first wing of Max Ramus. We will Yay. go ahead and do the next wing in just a minute. <laughs>